Hello everyone. Welcome back to the pharmacovigilance series. In this video, we'll be going through labeling assessment. If at all you have any question, you can comment below in comment box. So let's get started. First, we'll see the importance of labeling assessment in pharmacovigilance. The objective is the evaluation of spontaneous report and serious adverse event from clinical trials accurately and consistently report adverse event information to health authorities globally. Monitor the safety of investigation compounds and marketed products. Ensure the consistency among all the evaluators and data entry site as well as maintain accurate and meaningful databases. For uniformity of assessment, it is critical that the sum labeling reference document is used. First one is investigator brochure. This document contains all known preclinical and clinical information on the investigational product. Next is company core data sheet that is CCDS or company core safety information that is CCSI or corporate product labeling profile that is CPLP. This document contains minimum scientific and medical information required in all other product labeling documents. Next is local product document that is LPD. The local country product labeling document is approved by the respective regulatory authority such as SMPC and USPI. SMPC that is summary of product characteristics. The, this product labeling document is approved in the European country and USPI that is US package insert is approved by US FDA for US. CCDS and LPD are labeling document used for the labeling of post marketed products. Now, now we will see how to assess event as expected or unexpected, labeled or unlabeled, listed or unlisted. So moving to the expectedness. Expectedness refers to events that have previously been observed with the use of the drug in humans and is documented in the RSI document. Expectedness does not refer to what might be anticipated from the non-pharmacological properties of the drug. Also, it does not refer to what may occur in the course of the disease progression. For example, if a severe di diarrhea is in the label and patient develops dehydration following the severe diarrhea, then dehydration would be considered unexpected unless it is in the label. While moving towards how to determine expectedness, first we will see the criteria for expectedness. Determining the whether a reported event is expected or not is a two level process. First, determine if the event term, check for the synonyms as well, already is included in the RSI, that is reference safety information document. Second, determine if the event is different regarding its nature, severity, specificity and outcome. We will see each criteria briefly. Nature of events the etiopathogenesis and prognosis of the event must be considered while judging expectedness. For example, if arteritis is expected in the RSI document, then temporal arteritis should be considered unexpected due to the associated additional risk and poorer prognosis. If the RSI document lists an event which is specified as a transient or acute but in the new case if it is persist or it is chronic then it would be considered as unexpected. For example, prolonged elevated level function test is considered unexpected when lab labeling states only transient elevated level function test. Next is a severity of events. If a reported adverse event is significantly more severe than the labeled adverse event, then it should be considered as unlabeled. For example, circulatory collapse is considered unexpected when hypotension is labeled. Next criteria is specificity of events. 
further anatomical specification of a label adverse event does not make it unlabeled for example left side chest pain is equivalent to chest pain it should not be assessed as unexpected if the chest pain is expected so it may be the left side or any location it it will be only the expected also the second example we can consider is fibrosis of left lobe is also equivalent to the lung fibrosis okay further histological or diagnostic specification does not make an event unexpected for example if hepatic necrosis is expected then a liver biopsy showing hepatic necrosis with the presence of eosinophils which is not mentioned in labeling does not make an event unexpected specific diagnosis should be considered unexpected if only the broader diagnosis is in the label for example if pneumonia is in the label and now you you see a case of p carini pneumonia which is not in the label then the event would be considered as a unexpected next criteria is outcome given the importance and sensitivity associated with cases involving death unless death is explicitly mentioned in product information it should be reported as an unexpected event now we'll see the expected adverse event an event that is noted in the investigator brochure or labeling document that is package insert or smpc it's called as a expected adverse event in the european union the two different reference document or labels are used for marketed drugs for the expectedness one is the global eu label label that is spc and the other is the company course safety labeling that is ccsi now how to assess if it has a unlabeled or unlisted if it is a found in the spc then it is considered as a labeled but if it is not found in the spc document then it is considered as a unlabeled similarly if it is a found in the core labeling of each member state document then it is called as a listed event but if the event is not found in the core labeling of each member state document then it is called as a unlisted event now when we consider adverse event as a labeled if adverse event included in the selected product labeling document if adverse event identified by the reporter as a symptoms or consequences of a listed event for example the listed event of a stroke resulting in hemiplegia next based on a medical judgment that is exacerbations of certain ae for example ae in which the natural course of the disease include exacerbations or question period for example asthma depression next all a in the selected document in case of a drug overdose also the reactions listed for a product continue to be considered listed even when the reported as a consequences of interaction next fatal sae are considered listed when the selected product labeling document specifically indicates that sae could result in death drug withdrawal syndrome if withdrawal sy- symptoms are mentioned in the selected document or the ae occurring upon the drug withdrawal are a part of the normal signs and symptoms of the disease for which the drug was indicated if the event reported in the same as approved indication for the drug so in all this scenario we consider the adverse event as a labeled now when we consider the adverse event as a unlabeled as all we know unlisted events are adverse event that are not listed in the current product labeling documents so this include the following scenarios adverse event that are symptomatically and pathophysiologically related to an adverse event listed in the product labeling document but differ from the ae because of a greater severity or specificity also events not included in the selected product labeling document 
if all clinical study assay which are specifically associated with an excipient of placebo or if a or if a that while included in a more general listed event add more specificity or are more severe for example infections in the labeling document would be less specific than e coli infection or bacteria septicemia next is fatal assay are considered unlisted when the selected product labeling document does not specifically indicate that the assay could result in a death next drug withdrawal syndrome if withdrawal symptoms are not mentioned in the selected data sheet or the ae are not part of the normal signs and symptoms of the disease for which the drug was indicated